Morning folks, welcome back. Freezing this morning, really cold. Very still right now. Forecast was down to minus five last night. So there's a good ground frost and we've got a very reliable forecast, high percentage chance of heavy snowfall this morning. I've come to continue this pine forest explore from last week. I'm gonna pop two maps up this week. I'll pop one map up to just highlight where I've already covered, the ground I've already trodden and the areas I've explored. And then I'll pop a second map up, which will be the target for today. And that target includes an area that's open. It looks like there's a, an anomaly in the middle of this wood. So I'm gonna try and head in there and see if that opening gives us any shots into the forest. But whatever it is and wherever it is, I don't know for sure. It's all based on the terrain and the conditions. I just don't know what's coming, so it's a bit of an adventure today. Hope to get into the pine forest and shoot vertically up to the canopy. The sky's nice and overcast, so might get a little bit more dynamic range in the shadows. See what happens, just take it one step at a time and uh, try and piece together a few decent shots this week. Okay, enough waffle. I'm gonna pick my feet up, make a move, head off up to where this clearing might be, and that'll probably be the next time I bring you back, hopefully, with a composition. So I'll see you in a little while. interesting place well this is the clearing that I could see on Google Maps I need to be careful where I tread I don't want to <laughs> take any saplings out strange atmosphere probably because we've got snow dew or something to do with the humidity but I'm looking around trying to find compositions and it's all so dark it's hard to um, just suddenly step into the shoes and, and see things for what they are. It's, uh, it takes me a while to adjust and this is a, an unusual environment to me. So I'm just acclimatizing right now. It'll take me five minutes. But I've got a little composition here on the GoPro. It's no more than this. I'm just gonna have a look at it. What is that tree? It's an oak. Beautiful autumn leaves. I mean, his problem is, is it's just too close to this fella. Look at the scale of that. He's a massive, humongous tree. He's just a bit too close, bless him. Although they might take the pine before they take the oak. Depends what they value most on the day, I suppose. But anyway, this composition. He's got a nice width and a nice height. Shame he didn't have some of this copper a little bit further up, but no worries, he's still got Still got a good, a good, I don't know what you call a group of autumn leaves that are still on a tree. A good bushage. I've gone into a portrait orientation, angling the camera up. And what I've decided to do is bring the frame on the camera just to the base of the oak and then try and shoot as, as tall up into the canopy as I can. But I'm using those two trees as the left and right borders. So basically we've got pine scaling up on the left and on the right with this copper here in the center on this oak. And the oak isn't centered, it's off to the right and it's sat forward. So this is the foreground interest and that's what I'm focused on. And then as these scale away, I'm hoping to just create a nice cool sensitive image of this oak. I've got absolutely no idea if it'll work. The light is just strange, very, very strange, very interesting. I'm going to carry on now. I've shot this little chap a couple of times. I shot it at f8 just to give me a sensible depth of field. I'm quite close, I'm shooting at 28mm. I was at exposure or around exposure by 0.3 of a stop. 
I took a couple because obviously angling up towards the sky, even though it is very grey, it's still very bright. So in order to make sure I get all of the detail at the base of this frame, with the sky included, I went over and under and at exposure, three shots. And that gives me options when I get to post-processing. And I think today's going to be about doing a lot of that because when the light's challenging, I find having two or three shots at slightly different exposures, it, it, it doesn't, it's not always the, the shot that's at exposure that I'll use. Sometimes, and mostly actually, the shot that's slightly underexposed is the one I go with. We can draw the shadows out an awful lot easier than we can ever reduce the highlights. So underexposing in these environments tends to be the way to go. Just by a little bit, just by enough, that's the thing. I'm gonna hang around here for a while. <coughs> what I'll do is, I'll head over to this tree line. I'm gonna explore this a little bit, probably take a few random shots, and then make my way along the edge there to that last pine. I might try and get a shot on him, and then see if I can get any shots into that tree line. And right in the corner there, there's a really bushy, it looks like an oak again. He might make a nice little subject if I manage to get all the way around. Composition. Lovely silver birch. Really nice chap. And he's sat on his own. There's very little around him. In a nice sweeping clearing. He's got a gap in the canopy above him. And uh, he's just got a really nice shape to him. A lot of silver birch, when they split at the, at the base like this, they come up in two, two trunks and that's your job. It goes up and it's done. It's just a split fork. And this one has this branch that comes off the side here and I really like that. Such beautiful colour on this bark. Really, really nice stuff. Yeah, I like this guy. So, to try and capture him the best way I know how, is come back here. Um, the forest floor I wanted to take into account because it's so open and that isolates the silver birch in the frame so I quite like having a little bit of the the actual forest floor there in, in shot but the nice thing about it as you see it on camera is the pines in the background kind of come to a point as well so it sort of emphasizes if you like in my mind anyway the proportion of the silver birch supports it at least so we've got the trunk coming up and separating out and then we've got the canopy coming back in. Something of a diamond shape. I'm clutching at straws aren't I? But, but, let's see. I've taken a few shots, under and overexposed shots as I mentioned previously, um, at f8. I've also shot at f2, that's the camera wide open. This lens is not notorious for being particularly sharp at f2, so I'm going to see how I get on with that. I'll have a look at it. I need to play with it a little bit anyway. If you can hear a vehicle in the background, it's just the Forestry Commission driving through, looking for stray humans who are out here shooting silver birch. I'll make a move in a minute. That concept is a diamond shape. Primary focal point, the silver birch. Try and make something of this. Beautiful character. And as usual, I'll pop a gallery up at the end of the video with the oak, the silver birch, and anything else I find from today. But I'm quite motivated to make a move now because I can see some more headlights coming from a different direction and I don't like it very much. So I'm off. I'll see you in a bit.
Isn't it funny how your day turns out sometimes? It's like last week was such a challenge that it was it was it was really difficult, and uh, to salvage just a couple of shots was enough for me for that day because it, it was tremendously changeable. And then today I've come out, the fog's really starting to roll in now. I've been here about two and a half hours, and I came in just down there somewhere. That oak is somewhere there, silver birch is somewhere there, and all I've done is made it around this wood along to the last standing pine here on the end. And it's just been mesmerising, this woodland with the, the mist in the background. Just keeps stopping, stopping me in my tracks. I just keep having to <laughs> soak it up. It's so beautiful. It's just so beautiful. The sad thing is, I don't, I don't really have any any compositions that can highlight it. I can't see anything that I can shoot to share it, share it with you. It's just, it's just as it is, and it's really nice. So. What I've decided is, in order to keep the video at a sensible length, <coughs> I'm not going to shoot down into the dense pines today. What I am going to do is I'm going to carry on around here. I'll work my way around these. There's a beautiful silver birch over here, just there. I want to go and explore that because he's got the open light. Whatever little light we have is reflecting off him quite nicely. So. Because the background's quite dense, we might have a shot in or around there. And then what I'm going to do, because this is all so dense, we've got these like fallen pine limbs all the way down here. There's little bits of interest all the way down. So I'm going to make my way to the edge of this, this uh, little clearing area. And I'm going to work my way down, shooting as I go. And I'm going to capture everything that I can down that tree line. And hopefully, if I spend some time in post-processing, I'll be able to extract one or two nice excerpts of that, that tree line. Got this fog, it's dense dark background. The light is, is quite nice at the moment. It's quite a, quite a bright sky. So much for this snow, eh? We should have had 17 foot of snow by now. Yeah, it's not happened as they said, not yet anyway. Some snow would have been nice hanging off the edge of these trees. What a place to come if we do have snow because I know that I'm going to be able to step back and take some shots into the trees. So it's definitely, definitely a place I'm going to be sticking a big fat cross on to come back to. So I'm really, really pleased I came up to explore this clearing. Just shows you it's not always in the trees, it's sometimes outside of the trees looking in. And today that's certainly been the case. So I really hope I've got one or two nice shots to share with you this week. And as I said, I'll, I'll pop them up in the gallery. I'll just find one more composition, share that with you, and then sort out the gallery. I'll see you in a minute. The light right now is epic. There must be some, there must be some snow cloud up there or something. You get that haze that's, not haze, like a hue. There's almost a yellow tint to things. And I can't, I know the GoPro won't capture that, but there is. It. When I come to post-process these images, I haven't taken yet, <laughs> but I will be doing in a minute. They're going to have a yellow tint to them naturally. And if I get the, the white balance on the cool side, I'll add back a little bit of those warm tones just, just to remind myself of, of what it looked like. And hopefully, hopefully the raw files will draw the, the yellow tones out because they're there. They're part of this scene right now. I can see it with my naked eye. It's, uh, it's very beautiful. As is this little composition, I think. I would really like this. Um, try and just quickly explain it. Basically, it starts, starts down here and then sweeps up and across frame. But what's nice about it on top, apart from this beautiful golden copper on the floor and the nice dense backdrop, it's those three fellas there towering up. So there's the three pines and the silver birch just to the right hand in between those two trees, arcing up across and out. And it just makes for quite a nice, I think, I think it makes for quite a nice little composition. It's a beautiful subject, very intricate. 
So I've been paying some attention to my, my focusing. Gone into a portrait orientation, placed the base of the silver birch there, the bottom right hand thirds, arcing up across frame with the three pines in the background and then the whole thing shooting towards top of frame. I like that composition. It's complicated. It is complicated. But if I mute down the background, bring up the highlights, and that's something we need to talk about at some time, is how certainly I think about my post-processing routine as I'm taking my shots. Post-processing is part of the compositions that I choose. I just spotted something in the undergrowth and I wonder if it's a deer. Could be a cyclist, eh? we're in cycling territory. <laughs> so yeah, that's that one anyway. So hopefully I've got a couple of compositions that have been worth sharing. I hope the results are at least acceptable. I'm gonna make my way down this tree line now, snap a few shots of these open-sided pines with the draped limbs, look really cool. You can see it just, very very slow you can just see the mist moving across the top of the trees magical i'm sorry if today's been a bit absent-minded i'm just completely absorbed in this environment it's just it's just epic and uh just trying to find a balance between <laughs> capturing the compositions recognizing where i am and what's a, what's available to me and then soaking in some of the amazing atmosphere so anyway folks no more waffle from me today. I'm going to post a gallery for you now. Next week, I'm going to move into the next plot, which has got other features in it and a different kind of vibe to this completely. So it will probably be the furthest west I go for the midsection of this pine forest. And the map will make sense of that next week. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Please take care of one another. And as ever, if you can't be good, just be careful. I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye for now.